There we go. Okay, and now we're recording. Uh, we'll talk a real quick about, um, about class hierarchy in C++. And what this is, is that we can have a class that is either a grandchild of a class through an intermediary, or we can do multiple inheritance where a child will inherit uh, the traits not just from one parent class, but from two. Uh, so th those are the two labs for this week. The first one, we look at hierarchy, meaning uh, we've just got straight uh, multi-level inheritance. Uh, but then the, the, lab, the other lab, and this is what I'll talk about tomorrow, is about um, multiple, uh, where you're getting derivatives from two sets of uh, uh, parents, not two sets of parents, from two parents. So this might be better explained. Let me, let me do a quick thing on the iPad. Oops, come on. Come on. There we go. Okay, so what I'm really talking about here is uh, two different ways that we will uh, look at some of these derivatives. So here's our dividing line right here in the middle. Um, the first one that we're looking at today is, uh, is a, a hierarchy or uh, two layers of, uh, of inheritance. So if we have a, a class up here, fine. And then we have seen how, if this is now the, if this is the base class, we can get a derived class uh, with class B. But class B in and of itself could also act as a base class for a class C. So now here's the second derived class. So uh, there's two things to note about this. One is, I mean, we just look at it and go, okay, not only do we have parents now, but we've got grandparents. And that is true, that, and that gives us this multi-layer concept uh, that, that we're exploring in this module. Um, but the second point to know is that class C doesn't derive directly from class A. People might think that, okay, it's deriving from both A and B together, meaning it's gonna have both of these streams here. Um, but in, in, in fact, that's not true. Uh, A does not derive to C directly at all. So this link here really is not valid. But what we have to take a look at is, is the functionality valid? And it is. Um, class C here is gonna be enjoying all of the public methods in class B. So all of these public methods, those all derive here to class C. So what is class B's public methods? Well, it's the ones that we define in that class, but since class B derives from class A, class B has, you know, by design, access to all of the class A public methods because that's the way um, inheritance works. So it's these methods here, these class A uh, public methods, I'll call them just PM for right now, those get seen in class B. And because C now derives from B, all of those get passed through. So it's almost like it's not a direct line, but it's, a, it, it's sort of a pass through line. So we can safely say, yeah, class C here is gonna be able to enjoy all of the, pro, uh, the public methods in class B and in class A. And that's really because we're saying, well, they enjoy all of the class B public methods. And oh, by the way, as a side note, all of the class B methods include the class A methods anyway. So that's kind of how, how the flow works. So that's what we're looking at this week. And I've got an example here coded uh, in my Xcode. I'll show you all in a bit. All right, the other thing that we're looking at, uh, and this will be for tomorrow, and this is the second lab exercise, uh, is that 
we can have a, a class here and a class here. I'll call that class A and class C. We could have class C derive from class A. So this is our base. This is our derived. And we know how to just code this all day long. That's just regular role inheritance. Um, however, a class can actually derive from two base classes. If we had a class B here, well, that's also a base. And we can derive all the public methods in class B that, that can all derive to class C as well. So now class C sort of directly has um, access to all of the, the class A's and the class B's, all of those uh, public methods. So it's this structure here on the right uh, that is a multiple inheritance. The other is multi-layer and you can kind of think of it as well, all right, there's three layers. Um, in this multiple inheritance, we're talking about multiple class, multiple classes uh, serve as the base class. Um, in this, in the way that we've got it set up here, uh, is that there's just two layers in that, you know, kind of the class A, the parent layer, and then the child layer. And yep, you can sure get, um, you can sure get complex with this. Um, you could have another that class C that we just wrote, that could derive to a class D, and then you've got um, uh, both multi-layer and, uh, and multi-level, or multi multiple and multi-layer happening at once. Hmm, that might be a good final exam problem, wouldn't it? A class structure featuring both multi-layer and multiple inheritance. Hmm, I gotta- do it. Okay. Yes, do it. Yeah, there we go. That's the best part of teaching is when students go, yes, give us that code. I want to code that one. That's a good challenge problem. So, all right. So um, let me go now uh, to my Xcode. And you might remember uh, back, um, oh, let me get the zoom going a little bit more here. There we go. Okay, uh, remember in one of the demos that we did last week, uh, when we first started talking about inheritance, um, how I had a person class and I had a student class. And the person was the base, the student derived all the public methods from the person class, so the student was the derived class. Well here, I'm gonna take it one more layer, so we've got three levels uh, at play now. So this is um, multi-layer inheritance. And what I'm gonna do is create a new class of student. Um, and this particular student, uh, that class is gonna be called a, a CS student for a comp sci student. So we, if we look at, um, I'm gonna go back to the iPad here real quick. If we look at the structure, again, then we've got the person class here. That is gonna be deriving to our student class, which then is gonna be deriving uh, to a comp sci student class, CS student. Now then I've got just as, you know, uh, just for the, the purpose of demonstration, we just have very, very simple um, uh, uh, methods and data here. Um, if we remember, a person is going to have a, an SSN um, and a name. And of course, since that is private, pr uh, private data within the class, we don't have direct access to it. However, we've got all of our accessors and our uh, mutators, and so we can access uh, those data fields anytime we want. Okay. Now then the student, if we remember, has a GPA field. And again, that's private. So that's quite protected, but we've got our setter and our getter for it. You know, set GPA, get GPA, fine there. 
Uh, and then one extra field here for the CS student that we're going to add uh, is just simply what's their lab assignment? Um, which lab? So like if their home lab was uh, in the library, L, L149. Um, maybe that, that's something that would, would store there. So we would see here based on this hierarchy that if we were going to create a person using a person constructor, I'll just call it P for now, uh, then we're going to have to have an int and a string. And that's in order to set uh, this social and this name, int and string. If we were to have a student object being created, so here's a student, I'll call it, how about S? Well, we need to set this GPA, so they'll have to have a, you know, a float for the GPA. Okay. But then remember the way inheritance works is we've got to pass through um, the, uh, the arguments that we're going to feed to the person constructor when that gets called. So we would then also have our standard int and we'd have a string. I'll say this int is going to be an S in the string N. Uh, because then when we pass that to the person constructor, we're going to pass S and N um, directly to it. All right, so we're good there. Now, let's extend that thinking just by one more level of abstraction. Um, if we create a comp sci student, and I'll, I'll do it down here, I'll just call that one a C. Well, we've got to remember um, that we'll have these four variables that we've got to in, uh, initialize it with. Um, we, we've got to make sure that we include uh, variables for lab here, GPA, and then uh, these two up here. So the way we do that, though, it's interesting. We don't have a daisy chain sequence of constructors that fire. But instead, all we do is worry about the level above us. So here, we'll, in the CS student constructor, uh, we would have um, a string uh, for the lab, OK? And then a float for our GPA, an int for our social security number, and a string for, uh, for our name. Now, of those, CS student itself just cares about lab. That's its only uh, private member variable. Um, everything else is going to get passed through up to the student constructor. So then here is going to be our student constructor that follows. And we're going to pass along G, S, and N. And those then get tossed up to the student constructor. Now, what's interesting is this student constructor that we pass here that goes up to here now and that when that happens well then that person constructor gets called also and the variables just kind of flow naturally um, into where, where they should be going so we have um, and this all happens kind of behind the scenes where these constructors fire uh, and we get the uh, the right variables passed so um, our i think that was a long way of saying that um, we're going to have a total of four private member variables that we eventually have to set. And, um, and it's going to be important to keep track of those. Very important to keep track. Okay, so now I'm going to go back to the Xcode. And here's the person. I didn't touch this uh, since this is a base class. Um, uh, this just is the highest level of, of abstraction and the, the easiest to understand. So there's our our, our uh, SSN, which is an int, and our name, which is a string. Our constructor, nice and simple here. We're just going to pass the, the int and the string to it, and it's going to set then SSN and, uh, and name. OK, so we're good there. Um, let's go to student. Student I didn't touch either because I didn't have to, because it's being um, derived into or it's it's serving as the base class to the to the next the next class uh, so just to kind of review this um, here is our class specification 
And as a reminder, um, we do put the base class there. So uh, base is our person. We've got one private member variable, just that GPA. And then here's that constructor. This is just like we did last week. I haven't touched it, haven't needed to. Um, and this is saying that, okay, student can expect to get three arguments sent to it for its constructor. It's gonna consume one of those arguments. It's gonna consume the GPA argument and do a quick set. Meanwhile, the, the two remaining arguments are gonna get passed through uh, to the person constructor. All right, so we're gonna follow this same concept now and I created this CS class. I'm, not, I'm sorry, CS student class. So let's take a look at this now. So first is our header. Note that we're deriving not from person, but we're deriving from student. You have to uh, abstract one level up and that's gonna be our base class. And you, uh, it will draw an error if you try and, and you know, hop to, it's not gonna know what you, uh, what you did. All right, here is that string. It's the private member variable for our string. Um, and then here is our constructor. Uh, I'm gonna actually, there we go. I zoomed out just a little bit so it all appears on one line, just so uh, we can make sure that we are tracking where these variables are going. So as I mentioned before, at this point in our abstraction, we're gonna end up with four variables and there they are. So if we create a comp sci student, it needs these four variables, these four arguments. Uh, it is gonna consume the lab assignment one. It's gonna set that real quick. But then the remaining three, GSN for uh, GPA, the string social security number, and the string N for name, uh, those all then get passed through uh, to that student constructor, okay? Then our main program here, note that I've got, um, I'm creating objects at all three levels, just to demonstrate, first of all, that I know how to do this, that I know what I'm talking about, uh, but just for, for completeness. Uh, so if you're gonna exercise your, your classes, make sure that you put it through its paces, really put it through its paces. Um, now here, when I created this dad object that just required these two, the, um, the student object, my daughter Ellen, um, is uh, needing these three parameters. And then the CS student, uh, named after my son John, it has all four of these. And then uh, just a quick side note, just to be very cautious uh, about the order uh, in which you put these constructor parameters, because the order does matter. Uh, that order does have to line up with the, um, the student constructor and the CS student constructors. And here I put the lab assignment first and then the social. So uh, you'll, you guys already know all that from our previous work. So, uh, so there's, our, uh, there's the demo program. I'm, I'm gonna run it real quick and it's just gonna uh, basically do a data dump of these three objects. And down here in my console then, yep, uh, there's the dad object. It's got two data fields. Uh, there's the student object, and it's got three fields. One of them is part of the student class. The other two are part of the person class. Uh, and then that last one has got four data elements. Um, the last one is part of the CS student class. The second to last one is part of the student class. And then the other two are part of the, uh, the person class. So this, in a nutshell, is how we can go about doing um, uh, class hierarchies and uh, and this multi-level um, uh, uh, inheritance. Okay. All right. I'm going to open it up for questions. I'll stop the recording here. Oh, and I will post this code to uh, to Canvas for us so you 